a little youth explosion 2020. What's going on? So today I'm Rex Brown, a member of East End Baptist Church. And I'm James K. Lewis Sr., a member of East End Baptist Church as well. So we're we'll coming to y'all today about asking just a couple questions that we have written down uh, about uh, what you should do when interacting with law enforcement. So basically, what we're let's going, go, let's going go, to start let's off go, let's with this. Into it. So the first thing you should do when you pulled over by officer, what should you do? Don't panic. Do not get loud. Just be calm. I know situations will put you in that mode where you just got to get it out of your system. But please, I work in the court systems. In that courtroom, when you go in front of that judge, and they ask the police officer, what was the individual cop? And the police officer say yes, no, or whatever. So if they say yes, that you were calm and you're polite, it's in your favor. That's true. So don't when you when you're sitting in the car, make sure your hands are visible on the steering wheel, on the dash in front of you, on the steering wheel in front of you. Don't be reaching around. Just wait for the officer to come up, introduce yourself. He's gonna probably tell you why he pulled you over. After that, just give them your information and be, be, be on your way. But what happens when, you know, you got people that when they come over there, they want to argue with, with the, the police officer? Uh, don't, yeah, don't, just don't argue. Yes. The police officer is not the, uh, the judge, so he, he doesn't know exactly what, because um, when you go to court, the, the judge wasn't there when you got pulled over. Correct. So don't argue with the officer on the side of the road. Just take your ticket, go to court, and fight your case there. And when you come to court, be prepared. Tell your side of the story. You have three options. Your first option is guilty. Second option, not guilty. And your third option is no contest. Let me explain a little bit more. Okay. Guilty, once you tell them you're guilty, you have nothing to say in your defense of the case. You're saying the police officer's right. Not guilty is you, you believe that you want to tell the judge something in your side of the story. Okay, no contest basically says, okay, wait a minute, the, the, the police officer might be right, but I still want to say what I have to say in my defense. And the judge will listen to all of them. He's not going to, he's not going to give you a bad mark for saying guilty, not guilty, or no contest. It's your right. So, so what will happen if you got in an accident and you go to court and say like you took a driver improvement school or something like that? Oh, that's a good question. Now. You'll have, he might offer you and say, well, your, your driving record mm -hmm. might be a plus five or plus three, or, as long as it's plus. Let me say it again, plus. Plus. He will offer you, he might offer you driver improvement class. So here, here's the little thing, here's the little catch. You don't go to the driver improvement class, mm -hmm. you don't complete it, when he gives you this time frame, mm -hmm. then he's going to charge you a whole lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So he's giving you a, a way out. He said, I'll drop it. I'll drop the charges down if you complete the driver improvement class, pay court costs. Okay. There you go. You complete it, bring your certificate in. You don't have to come back to court. Pay your court costs. You're done. Yeah. That sounds good, right? Yeah, it's, that sounds real good. So when you get your, if you don't, if you have minus points in your driver record, yeah. just try to drive safe. Yeah. Uh, you driving, drive safe, do the speed, let me put your seatbelt on. Uh, if you have friends in the car, tell them, make sure everyone has either some kind of ID on them or and is wearing their seatbelt. Another thing that we, we were just talking about before we went on the air is people get loud. They have an accident, they want to get frustrated, they want to actually, you know, yell and cuss. Well, remember, the body camera is on too. And when they bring that as evidence in the courtroom, you can tell your story all you want. That body camera is going to give that picture. You say you were calm, but you up there with your hands flailing all over the place. Guess what? You're not going to win. And the judges don't play. Yep. <laughs> they sure don't. So what 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 I so say like you're walking down the street and a police officer just so happened just stop you, uh just say like 
they believe you did something, you fit a description for something. What should you do? Okay, you, you got a whole lot of different angles on this. I'm not judging jury. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you the law. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you if it was me. If it was me, if I had nothing to hide, then hey, I could tell them my name. You don't have to. You do not have to. But it's going to prolong the situation longer and longer and longer. Yeah. For what? Mm -hmm. I mean, you had nothing to hide. I know my rights and every day missing that nothing. You watch too many videos and people will actually get yourself in trouble because you start getting more and more swole and loud in that video. That the camera system is watching you. Yep. It's sitting there like, okay, somebody's going to tell the truth yeah. and the police officer going to be calm because he knows all. So he's going to be like, well, sir, you know, the reason why I stopped you is, you know, I need, we have a situation, we found an individual that fits your description, yeah. which might be true, maybe not. Yeah. You know, but right now, it's, the situation is so tight. Yeah, true, yeah. You know, it's real yeah. tight. And, and, you know, like I say, getting back to the driving side of it, mm -hmm. you have an accident, and uh, you involved in a real accident, car accident, the first thing you want to do is what? Stay calm. You, you calm. Don't panic. You check yourself out, mm -hmm. check out, and make sure that nobody's hurt. If they are, call 911. Hey, I need, hey, I need an ambulance over here. I got an individual that's hurt. Do not leave the scene of an accident. Do not do leave not. the scene of an accident. Even if it's a small fender bender, if you back into someone, do not leave. Because you never know if there's a camera down the street watching you, and you leave because you don't see any damage. Find out who car it is. Even if you if you don't have time, write your name, information, your insurance on a piece of paper, put it on the window. And that's all you have to do. Do not leave the scene of an accident. That is what, a felony? Yeah, that's a hit and run. It could be felony hit and run. It could be misdemeanor. It all depends. Now it's going to cost you more money. So the little things that to keep you safe, treat that car as if... It was you and you alone, but you might have people in there. Please, be safe. Always take safety first. Yep, so what, when you're in, if you was in an accident and you believe that you're not at fault and a, a, the police officer writes you a ticket and you believe you don't have, you, you, that was a wrongful ticket, what are you supposed to do then? Okay, accept the ticket, get yourself together, get all your documentation, take pictures, and then when you come in front of the judge, tell the judge your side of the story. You sit there arguing with the police officer, the police officer is not the judge and jury. So take him to the judge and tell the judge your side of the story. So now, here we go. What happens, let's go and flip the reverse verse right. scene. What happens when a person, I'm gonna give you the scenario, here I am. I'm getting mad. What did I do, you officer? I don't understand why you're pulling me over. What is the problem? What, what happens? Knowing what happens, you're loud, you Arguing with the police officer, knowing that what happens is basically you get put in handcuffs. Your hands, your hands is going like this. You don't know if you're gonna hit him. He might fear for his life, but if you just if you talk calmly, most likely you won't get put in handcuffs. But if you're so happy that you do get put in handcuffs, you might get charged with disorderly conduct, especially if you're yelling in a quiet setting, especially in a residential neighborhood. If it's like night, it's like after curfew, or well, not really after curfew, but it's after nighttime, so basically about nine o'clock to. Three o'clock normally, you get a noise violation. So this all the conduct might be the charge. Uh, so basically, you basically get booked in. Uh, say like whatever the charge is, you get booked in on this all the conduct. All right. So what what happens if my license was suspended? And you're driving. And, and, and they're going to take me to, 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 to jail. So what 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 happens then? Well, so if you if you're driving on a suspended license, you get booked in. You will come in. Uh, basically, you take you down to booking. They'll process you, and you'll get to see a magistrate. The magistrate might uh, is basically release you out on bond. So basically, you get a, a bond. You pay a certain amount to basically get out. And that's dependent on your attitude. Yep. So that's what we said earlier. Your attitude goes a long way. So if he goes, the officer is standing right there, and he tells the magistrate that you was not cooperating. Most likely, the bond, the magistrate will revoke your bond. So what happens if we had a car accident, mm -hmm. I hit your car, mm -hmm. and then I'm coming up there, and I start pushing you and everything because you messed up my Mercedes Benz on my left, you know what I mean, and you backed into it. Not me, 
hit you, you hit me, you back into my left. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I'm, I'm upset now, so instead of me trying to be calm, yeah, you stay calm. Mm -hmm. But instead of me being calm, I'm mm -hmm. coming over there, I start pushing you and everything. What should you do? Walk away. Get away from them, call the police, mm -hmm. and basically just say, hey, I made a mistake and backed up into this car, the guy's getting irate with me, and I need some help. He assaulted me. And what is assault? Any type of touching, unwanted touching. Okay? Woo, that is wow. You know what I mean, dudes? And I work in a courtroom, so I see all these cases. So, and they come in, and, and you're looking at people like, really? They did that? Yeah. Are they serious? Yeah. Oh, wow. And you're surprised because I see them first when they go to the jail. Right. And they get booked in, and people try to plead their case right there. Don't try to... Fuss and fight. If you ever get booked in, don't try to fuss and fight at the deputies. That they, they, they weren't there when you got pulled over. Exactly. All they do is hand your paperwork. Then you basically, the next day, uh, depends on when you come in, you'll basically go to the court. So that's your day, you know, your arraignment to basically either plead your case or either get arraigned on another day to go ahead and actually get, get a lawyer if you need it. And then, Did you say lawyer? Yes, lawyer. And that's gonna cost more money? No, it shouldn't. If you can't afford a lawyer, the the court can appoint you one for free. Public defender. Public defender. And that's gonna cost you too. It's not free now. Yeah. <laughs> you gonna pay that let lawyer fee too? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we like wow. And I was like, woo. So they ask you about your financial. Mm -hmm. yep. If you're working, if you make too much money, yep. and then if you make too much money, then you're going to have to hire your lawyer yep. or represent yourself. Yep. Now, you represent yourself. What happens uh, when you go up there and you're not prepared? Oh, man. It's, it's going to be a bad day in court for you. It's, it's, it's going to be a bad day. It, the, basically, the, what, the prosecutor will we'll eat into you. We'll try to nitpick at your story as much as he or she can to hem you up. So how many cases have you seen like that somebody <laughs> actually represent that so? <laughs> so many that uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not laughing, you know, at the cases itself. Mm -hmm. I'm at I'm laughing at the individuals because they did not come to court prepared. You know, the basic stuff. Now, no, this is about a happy time for you all. Mm -hmm. So you think positive, think positive. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do anything wrong. People that's in my car are very friendly. They're calm. I'm doing the talking. I'm responsible for this vehicle. My hands are on the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to the police officer. Think about what the first thing we, we do. Hey, what I do? Exactly. I wasn't driving. Why are you pulling I'm, me over for? Yeah. <laughs> What's your reason for stopping me? I didn't do nothing. You don't do that. Okay. Don't do that. If I did it, sir, thank you, sir. Uh, I see you in court. If you get your court date, mm -hmm. boom. You go inside the magistrate, you get a bond, you still got to come to court. Yep. Got to hire your lawyer. Mm -hmm. More money. He's up. <laughs> yep. You rich? Are you rich? Nope. I'm not no, rich I either. I know I ain't rich. <laughs> and something so small as a speeding ticket costs you a couple, couple dollars. Maybe fifteen hundred. Mm -hmm. All depends on how many you was speeding. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. thousands of dollars, and I have seen both. Yeah. DUIs. Oh yeah, that'll cost you over about ten grand alone. Uh -huh. Marijuana and stuff like that in the vehicle. We're talking. Uh, nobody has the seatbelt on. Seatbelt violations. You're talking about kids without their seats and they're riding in the car seat. So there's so many traffic infractions we could have ended on. We just talked about the basic, just little stuff that you might want to need to know. Okay, what do you think? I mean, I, I, think, I, think, I think we can't. Think, think we covered just about everything that we possibly could cover. High five! All right. Work. All right, you just closed in 2020. It was great with y'all being with us. I'm Rex Brown. And I'm James Lewis. Have fun. Congratulations.